This is Abe Freetanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm very excited to be speaking with John Bass about season four of Miracle Workers. How are you, John? Good. How are you, man? Good, good. I'm very excited to have this show back. It was a little bit longer of a wait than I thought. I was worried we'd never get it back because things are changing yeah, at TBS, etc. Yeah. So I'm very happy that it's here. I think it's the end, not just end times. But I think this is the last season we'll get, but I'm perfectly, perfectly happy about that because it's been a, a really great run. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, you know, there's always a, a world in which um, the, the seas part once again and they say, come on through. But yeah, it feels it feels like we treated, I think for the most part, we treated this as the last season. A lot of very saccharine letters were given at the end of this season uh, to the cast and crew. So yeah, it's a, it, I think we're, we're, we've all had that moment where we've gone, this was so, so beautiful and we love each other and um, we'd all do it in a heartbeat again. That's great. Well, my first question is in season four, you play a dog. What kind of research did you have to do for the role? Absolutely zero. Um, it just came naturally to me. Um, I, uh, I have a dog. So a lot of the research was done at home on the couch, just staring at her beautiful face and, you know, taking it in. Um, and then also my neighbor, my, my, my dog's name in the show is Scraps. Um, I was walking my dog and I saw my neighbor and I was like, what's your dog's name? And she said, Scraps. And so I felt like I had a kindred spirit with with my neighbor's dog as well. We had the exact same name. Uh, and so it was very, very fun to to let her know that I, too, was playing a dog named Scraps, <laughs> which <laughs> which definitely freaked her out a little bit. But uh, once I explained it enough and and showed her uh, an episode of Miracle Worker, she was like, oh, I get it. You're weird still, but I get it. You also see you're comfortably formal in a polo shirt, which is a bit less revealing than the costume that you wear in what I've seen of season four so far. What a, yes. what, are you, uh, what kind of input did you have into your costume and how do you feel about wearing it uh, throughout the season? Um, I had, well, first of all, we had an incredible costuming department. They were extremely aware that this was like me being semi-nude for an entire season. So it was a very fun and weird conversation being like, how do we make you comfortable with all the, with also putting you in a sex skimp outfit. And I said, um, I don't know if there's a way, but we'll try. Um, but it was, it was so fun. Um, and, and in terms of like, you know, getting the initial uh, uh, rendering of what my outfit was gonna be like, I was a little shocked. I was a little scared. Um, but then, you know, I took it in, I think they texted it to me. I took an hour to be like, I had to like ask myself the questions, right? Like, am I comfortable with this? Is this going to be funny or is it just going to be weird? Like, can I pull this off? And after that, like, I think I just sent them the most like excitable text ever, which was just like, this looks awesome. I can't freaking wait. And that was sort of my outlook on it from that point is like, this is awesome. I can't believe I get to do this. I don't know if it's just me or it's been a long time, but it feels like season four is both darker and a little bit more boundary pushing than what we've seen before. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Yes, yes, without a doubt. Well, it's I think for the two are things that we went into the season uh, with the creators, Robert Padnick and Dan Merck as our um, trusted and... Um, incredible leaders um, saying this season's going to be darker and it's going to be more boundary pushing. And it's going to come from a place that like, we're all sort of dealing with it, which is that like, we're getting older and we're having to like settle down. But like, what, what if we don't want that? What if that's not the thing that we want? And then realizing that maybe it is the thing that you want. You're just trying to push against something that's good for you. I mean, just that theme in general, I think is is something that like is boundary pushing for the series itself, which is 
uh, an extremely, extremely beautiful show about friendship and about love and about like um, taking these moments and sort of flipping them on their heads uh, from like different eras and, and different themes. But um, in terms of this season, some of those themes are dark, you know? And I I couldn't be more thrilled that like we are we do get we get the opportunity to to push those boundaries a little. I also feel like the parodies are more overt in a cool way. It's like, oh, I know exactly what it is we're mocking here. And of course things go yes. a different way. Yeah, I will say, um, there's there's this like really cool intersection between heart and character, which the show does impeccably well. And this thing that we sort of like swooped in this season, which was like, well, it's Mad Max, but it's also Dune. And it's also, um, you know, Elysium. And it's also The Matrix. And it's also Terminator. So like, because you have this like well of um, cultural landmarks that you can take from, uh, I can only imagine for the creators, there there was no other way to do it than to be like, well, come on, we got it. We got to do that. Um, and yeah, it's it's wait until I think episode five. I I'm, might be wrong on that, but there's one episode where there is a reference to a movie from the 90s. That is. I think probably my favorite thing we've ever done. I'll keep an eye out for that. That's uh, that's specific, but I'll I'll look out for that. I also think it's very interesting the way that you having the same actors every season play different roles, especially your relationship with Gerald Dean's character, just as it changes from season to season. What yeah, has yeah. that been like? Weird. <laughs> um, but also, yeah, weird and cool and crazy. Um, yeah, Geraldine has now been um, an angel, my sister, my lover, and or my wife. I don't know if we loved each other. Uh, and now my warlord. So it's really gone all over the place. Um, and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled to have uh, her as a scene partner through it all. Because um, not only is she an incredible scene partner, but she's also one of my best friends. And just, you know, I don't think that this is news to anyone. She's the absolute best. Uh, so couldn't have asked for a better angel, sister, wife, or warlord. She also has some pretty big movies coming up. I've been seeing a lot of trailers dropped uh, this week. Yeah, this week they're just dropping like flies. It's wild. Um, yeah, she's a she's a busy actress uh, for good reason. She is the best person to work with. Maybe Daniel will get famous someday too. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to work out for him or not. I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't, don't. Can we stop recording? Because he's not going to make it. Okay. Talentless. Um, no, he's the best. Uh, and then also, it's wild to be around so many. I mean, Karin as well is in the Spider Verse, and just like making his own movies. I, I, I can't tell you how uh how much this cast just makes me like go gaga because it's yeah it's crazy it's great this may be a tough question but do you have a favorite from your four characters on this show scraps without a doubt without a doubt yeah i'm gonna go scraps 100 percent um i love them all it was super fun to play todd because he was such a douchebag um but there's something I would say very freeing about just being in a sex gimp outfit for three months and getting to make your friends and coworkers laugh as much as possible. Speaking of playing a douchebag named Todd, I also saw you in another show recently called She-Hulk. Uh, yes, the other douchebag named Todd. Yes, of course. They might be the same character, just like a century and a half uh, apart, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> What was it like to be part of that show? And do people come up to you on the street and be like, you're really obnoxious? <laughs> no, luckily, no. No, um, I uh, I have not had that experience. I've had people come up and be like, you are such an asshole. And I'm like, thank you. 
Um, but for the most part, everyone's been super sweet. And it was once again, uh, an embarrassment of riches uh, in terms of the cast and the crew and getting to work with people who I've looked up to for years. Um, you know, I, I there are like five experiences uh, during She-Hulk where I could say like, this was the greatest moment of my life. Um, getting to play ping pong with Mark Ruffalo and Charlie Cox, like getting to like uh, Hulk out which is the coolest thing I've ever gotten to do in my entire life, bar none. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I, it was the best experience. I think like also just so crazy how relevant it was to the moment where it was just like, as the show was coming out, people were like, um, the tweets are almost exactly what they are in the show. Like when it would be like She Hulk is mid, and then like you'd see that on Twitter, you'd be like, oh, okay, so we're 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 doing something right. I know there's no word yet on a second season, and with Marvel, you never know because they have you know 800 movies coming out every year. Do you would you want to return uh, to play Todd again if there was a chance to do so? I, yeah, obviously. <laughs> it, w- once again, that is like. I've heard people talk about like the CGI-ness of it all and how like that was the coolest thing being in like that like gray suit with all the bobbles and stuff. I was just like, oh, I, I feel like a kid again. I feel like I'm I can literally do anything. It was so fun. Um, so in a heartbeat, I would I would do anything with that creative team, with those people, with those actors with those directors sign me up yeah you have other roles and projects lined up uh in the near future as well um i have uh, a a pretty fun indie film coming out uh called bad shabbos which i'm very proud of i i hope i hope it's i hope it, it makes it you know into some festivals um and then on on top of that you know we're in a uh very uncomfortable time in the industry with the writer strike. Um, so I'm just here to support the writers and hope that they get a fair wage. Can you describe anything more about that upcoming project, Bad Chavez? Um, it's about a Shabbat dinner that goes real bad. Uh, great, great cast. Um, David Pamer plays my dad, which is a all time high. Um, method man shows up for a while that that was a trip um and we we shot it in new york so um getting to be in new york with method man was uh one of one of the coolest things ever just like people stop being like you're method man you go yeah yeah yeah." (laughs) it was (laughs) the best uh so yeah i'm i'm excited for that project i i uh we're, we're trying to get into festivals right now you know playing the game I'll definitely keep an eye out for that one. It sounds great. Thanks. I also wanted to ask you just before I let you go, did you write your own IMDb biography? Yeah, of course. I like that. I feel like I don't see that very often. I went and it's like in the first person, very casual, very, very short, very nice. And I feel like I always look people up and it's this formal presentation, but it sounds like this is, this is what everyone does, right? Yeah, I I don't, I feel like it usually is very casual, but there is something fun where there's like an edit button at the top of IMDb where you can be like, oh, I can edit myself. I don't think anyone can edit. I think you have to be like, just, just so no one goes and tries to edit something else. It's not like Wikipedia, but like I, I realized I can edit my own biography and it was just like, John Bass has been in blank, 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 blank. And I was like, well, well, I'm John Bass. I'll just write it. I like that attitude. I think that's good. I think you can edit because I know I can add like reviews and other things, but I like the fact that you edited your own. I think it's nice. It has that personal thing and uh, very inviting. And the best part is it mentions Miracle Workers first, which of course is uh, is what we're here to talk about. So thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure and looking forward to everyone seeing the weirdness that is season four. Oh, thanks so much.